Hello, I'm Andrew Carter from Nebulous and today I'm going to give you two tips on how to configure an RDP session and an SSH session on the Juniper SA Mag series box. Uh, the great thing about this is it gives you control over which users can access an RDP session and an SSH session through the portal. So the first thing I'm going to do is log on to the administration console and from here I'll configure an RDP session to begin with. So what I need to do is I need to go to the resource profiles and then terminal services. This is where I configure the RDP session. And what I'll do here is I will then create a new profile. At this point, what I'll do is I'll actually configure a Windows terminal services from the type and I will call this test box. Uh, under there I can put a description if I want but the best thing to do here is just add a host in, either a host name or an IP address. So I already have a box configured that I uh, for RDP, so I'll just add that box in there. Oh. And I'll use the standard Premier Java RDP applet that comes with the Juniper. Uh, at this point what I can do is I can save and continue. And I'll add this to a user role. So what I need to do here is add this to a role which will then allow me to log in and access this resource. And then I'll save the changes there. At this point what I can do is I can actually go into the test box. This is a bookmark that's been configured on the Juniper but it's just a standard set of rules currently for the IDP session. So if I log into the test box I can actually see a lot more details about what I can allow and what I cannot allow for access. Uh, first thing first I'm going to change the screen size to full screen and I'm going to change the colour depth to 32 bit. This obviously gives you a better user experience for when you're actually running the RDP session. Uh, if I wanted to, I can do single sign-on so I can pass through the username and password through the single sign-on configuration and this will log you seamlessly into the RDP session. And again, if I want, I can also add some start applications in. So when the RDP session was launched, I could then add a application to launch automatically when it's logged in. In addition to that, what I can do is I can actually create some basic ACLs that allow things like connect local drives, connect COM ports, smart cards, and also I can uh, allow access to desktop background and menu and bit caching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to local drives, for example, uh, and I'm also going to allow uh, COM ports, uh, and I want to also allow desktop backgrounds. At this point, what I can do is I can save the changes, and this is an RDP session setup. So that is now an RDP session to a Windows box set up which will give me access to particular users uh, under the user role. What I'm now going to show you is how to configure an SSH session. So if I go into Telnet or SSH, the same principle is the same, I will now create a new profile and what I'll do is I will create an SSH session here. Uh, this is to a to F5 box I've actually got in the back end. So if I just call this F5 box and then the host is 18.4.30. So again, what I can do is I can add a uh, username that will pass that through. So if I do the default username and then save and continue, uh, and then again add that to the user role and save the changes there. Uh, again, similar to the RDP session, if I was to then click on the bookmark, I can then change certain certain fields. Um, so I can change the screen size if I wanted to and also the screen buffer. So at this point what I can do is I can now save changes and that is my SSH session set up. Um, if I now go to user roles and look at the users and just ensure that's configured. Uh, so yeah, as you can see in here I've got one terminal service and I've also got one telnet session. So if I save changes there just to make sure and what I'll do now is I'm going to log out of the admin page and just sign in uh, to show you how this works. So if I sign out of here and log in as a normal user as you can see I've now logged into the portal and what I've got here is I've got two icons I've got my test box which is an RDP session and I've also got the F5 box which is an SSH session so if I was to click on test box I should then load up a Java applet which will then actually launch the RDP session I just accept this, it's the first time I've run it, so I'll just accept that. Uh, and as you can see here, this is asking me to put my credentials in, so just add in my credentials.
and that has now loaded a RDP session uh, straight into a Windows box. So if I now exit out of that and the cancel that session, what I can do is I can now show you the SSH session. So if I was now click on the F5 box icon, this will then log in as root, which is default. And again, I'll just accept this. And this has actually now created a um, SSH session straight to the back end box without any other applications or any other tunnels being opened. Uh, again, so I can just uh, log into this. And as you can see, I've now got a uh, I've now got a session there, which is quite nice. So what that does is that actually allows you to configure a user to have RDP access and SSH access on a portal uh, through any any browser, which is um, which is very handy. So I'll just sign out of there. Um, obviously, if you've got any questions, then you can email me at andrew.carter uh, at nebulous.co.uk, and I'll answer any questions regarding that. And I hope that's been helpful, and um, thank you for watching.